Well, Paul, by, I was just going to um, give you some idea of where I'm coming from. I started with this wonderful book, The English Way of Death. <laughs> yeah. Julian Litton, who's been very helpful in pointing out historical um, aspects of coffin making in England. And uh, this, this dates from about 1540 to 1550. As you can see, it's a tapered design. Hmm. Um, there's what they call a gabled top. But I, I thought, um, to begin with, a, a taper is going to make it difficult for the, um, the, the lady Jackie who is uh, making the pall. It's going to hang. Um, yes. And as well, if there's anything to be placed on top of the coffin, it would, on a gable, it obviously would just slide off. So I thought, well, fair enough, but I think we're going to go for a, a basically rectangular shape. And you were looking at references of different types of materials that were used, weren't you? I remember this one is one of the few where there's yeah. actually decoration on the exterior as well. Interestingly enough, it was painted decoration, but it's, it's a simple rectangular box. Mm. As, as it says, it's not, it's not a coffin per se. It's a mortuary chest, which isn't quite the same thing. In terms of having something that was as a historical reference, mm. um, it's a matter of whether to go for something similar to that or bring it up to date and have a modern twist on it. It has to be something that you really believe in yourself and isn't too influenced by other parties, I think. Uh, oddly enough, I, I have to confess that I got the idea from the, um, the angle on the, the hat that Richard III is wearing in this famous anonymous portrait that hangs in the National Portrait Gallery. Which I think is a great reference. I mean, what better uh, connection could you have <laughs> in terms of an actual portrait of the man himself and saying, yeah. there's an angle that uh, I like and it actually is repeated in something that he's wearing. So that's where I got the angles from. But I think... For me, one of the most important things about the coffin is that it doesn't, it's, it's not an opportunity for me to, it's, it's not about me, I guess is what I'm saying. It's a great honor to be doing it, but I'm, I'm very interested in, in this aspect of using English oak, oak from the Duchy of Cornwall, you, and things that people can identify with. Because yes. we, we're, we're all British, you know, we relate historically, and the public can relate historically to things like English oak, you know, you can have a piece of furniture made yourself out of English oak. It's something one can relate to, and it's not just about me personally. And it links in with the duchy, and therefore with Richard, and yes. all these other aspects. So, But although you say it's not a, about you, it is really, uh, it is a personal project in the sense of you are the designer for it. And I mm. think um, the fact that you're having to make these sensitive decisions, the outcome of all of those decisions is going to be the final object. Mm. Um, but I think because you want it to be something that is not uh, an, you know, an ego trip uh, for you to design your perfect piece of furniture, mm. that's why I think it is becoming a relatively understated, elegant piece of work. And we're not trying to sort of add more and more decorative elements as uh, showing off techniques. It's more about finding what is the most appropriate mm. uh, outcome, even in terms of the details on the top of the lid and whether we refer to the white rose or the boar. Yeah. It's all little decisions like that that end up cumulatively <coughs> creating... They add up, don't they? Yeah. 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 